Muscular dystrophies are characterized by progressive loss of muscle mass and function. In our study, we developed a new gene therapy approach for a rare subtype of muscular dystrophy called lamma 2 deficient congenital muscular dystrophy that may be applicable to a broad range of inherited and acquired diseases. Children with lamma 2 CND have mutations in the lamma 2 gene and cannot produce the lamma 2 protein, which is essential for healthy muscles and nerves. Revolutionary genome editing technologies have enabled scientists to fix disease-causing mutations, including in the LAMA2 gene. However, not everyone has the same mutations in their LAMA2 gene, and creating a gene therapy specialized for each patient will be exhaustive and pricey. Also, LAMA2 CMD affects many children worldwide, which adds drug development and regulatory challenges. So, how do we get around this problem? It turns out we have a very similar gene called LAMA1, which can actually compensate for the lack of LAMA2. However, LAMA1 is expressed only during development and gets turned off as soon as we're born. Using CRISPR activation, we turned on LAMA1 in mice that lacked LAMA2 to see if we could treat these mice with muscular dystrophy. So how did we do that? We used a virus called AAV9 to deliver the three components of our CRISPR activation system. One deactivated Cas9, which does not cut DNA, two, guide RNAs that will guide that deactivated Cas9 to LAMA1 promoter, and three, the VP64 transcriptional activator, which will boost the expression of LAMA1. Not only did this gene therapy increase LAMA1 in the muscle and nerves, as expected, but the mice also had significantly better motor functions and less paralysis, showing a therapeutic benefit in both pre- and early symptomatic mice. This is an important first step, but there is much more work to be done, including toxicity studies, and more questions to be answered, such as, how long will the upregulation last? Can we slow the disease if we treat mice and even more advanced disease? This is clinically relevant given the patients already have extensive muscle damage at the time of their diagnosis. Importantly, this powerful system opens up the possibility of developing new mutation independent treatments, not just for muscular dystrophy, but for a broad range of diseases. Thanks for watching. Please see the manuscript and website for more details.